otherwise it seems overwhelming. Um, there needs to be a calendar that's referred to. Time is a, is a very abstract concept, and so having devices in the room that, that track the passage of time is important so that students get used to how much, you know, how much, uh, what an hour feels like, what 10 minutes feels like, etc. And then there needs to be regular monitoring that these things are being done, that students are writing homework in their planners, that they are taking notes, um, that they are, you know, turning in assignments and all of that. Uh, teachers like to think that students will take care of it on their own and they and they need supervision. Even the best of them do. Basically, all these things are good for everybody, and they're crucial for the students who have any, um, you know, any weaknesses, cognitive challenges, whatever they may be. This is just an example of a, you know, a <clears throat> of a notebook that stores homework, daily calendar, has notes, completed homework handouts, whatever. Um, and again, what the, the best instructional practices, <clears throat> instruction should be clear and concise. It should be broken down and expressed verbally in simple steps. Um, and in general, instructions should be more than one uh, you know, more than one sensory channel. If a teacher speaks to them, it should also be written. Um, you know, you, and so on. Um, new concepts are going to be difficult because they're scary and they need to be introduced in a setting that's controlled that has guidance and encouragement, and students should have lots of guided practice with new concepts. They should not be bringing home homework that they don't understand and haven't had enough practice to do independently. Teachers are uh, parents are parents, as Russell Barkley says, shepherds. Teachers teach. So if you're getting stuff home that your student doesn't know how to do, um, that you need to work with the teacher about that. That's not appropriate. They need constructive and positive feedback and a lot of it. Um, and then comprehension strategies can be taught explicitly. How to find a main idea. Um, how to... Uh, <coughs> You know, how they can be taught to engage visualizing somewhat. Uh, they can be taught how to take notes. They can be taught how to summarize. All of these things support comprehension. Um, and, um, you know, in writing, writing can, can be challenging because you need to have kind of a, an overall theme, a big picture, uh, which can be challenging, and that's not just for students with NLD, that's many students have that issue. Organizing ideas, self-monitoring so that they have an idea of, you know, what works and what doesn't, <coughs> and uh, they can have fine motor difficulties, so alternatives such as, um, keyboarding um, or even voice recognition software can uh, break down those barriers. Visual spatial processing will cause problems in math and so if you have, uh, if teachers teach with manipulatives and lots of them do, that is actually not necessarily a terribly good strategy for a student with NLD because suddenly there's all these colored blocks, you know, and what do you do with them? I mean, you know, you might just focus on one or two or, um, or something. And uh, uh, <clears throat> so that, that um, 
there needs to be some um, some variety there. Um, and again, um, generally for writing, writing should be taught with a strategic writing process. First, you generate ideas, then we organize ideas, then we draft those ideas in a written form, after which we can revise and then ultimately, um, and ultimately edit um, or proofread. And um, again, word, word processors, voice recognition, breaking down writing assignments, lots of false deadlines so that, you know, so that the topic is due on one time, the ideas or an outline or something like that for organizations to a separate time, a draft, a revised draft, and so on, all go in um, one after another. And um, again, uh, you know, math, again, you want to, you want to um, break those problem solving down into steps. Um, and show sequential, and, and make sure that students have reference materials, notes to go back to, that they can refer to, um, and that, you know, that they get lots of guided practice before they should be doing anything um, individual. Timed assignments, not necessarily a particularly good thing. Timing in general can be really stressful for students, if they don't like it, they shouldn't have to do it. I have a student right now that, you know, <clears throat> was being timed a lot for reading words, and his anxiety level was so high, you know, he would just freeze. And so we started working together. We started, are you going to time me? And I'm like, no, no, you're just going to read. And he's like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, um, you know, again, <clears throat> this student will, don't isolate the student. The student does need to have discussion and needs to communicate and practice communication. And some social skills training is done well. It can be a big, big help. Um, and uh, the, uh, <clears throat> again, I'll move past this verbal. There's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, repetition here. The thing with the school setting in general is the best environment, and this isn't always possible, but the, but the best scenario is if classes can be near each other, so that the student doesn't have to go from one end of the school all the way to the other, because you know what's going to happen? You get lost for a long time, <laughs> um, unless somebody takes them, but still. And then, if you can limit the number of classrooms that students have to move from as they get into middle school and uh, high school and so on, that is helpful too. The more novel and the more change in the day, the more anxiety provoking <coughs> it be for students. Classes are best if they're small and highly structured. Uh, and <clears throat> generally, the environment should be free of unnecessary distractions. I don't know if it's about you, but sometimes you rock, work in, rock into classrooms where it's like, you know, you feel like you're in some, one of the, you know, one of the locations in Disney World or something. Your stuff is hanging, and there's <laughs> things are moving around, or, you know, People like to make digital documents where you know there's animation going on, teeth chattering, and various things like that. Not a useful um, addition. In fact, um, harmful, distracting. The environment should feel safe to the student. Everybody learns better best when they feel safe and accepted. Um, so therefore, the environment should be safe, it should be tolerant of diversity and consistent. And uh, no tolerance for bullying at all. 
enough, enough adult supervision so that social interactions are monitored. Uh, and, uh, <coughs> and the school, if the, stu the school should provide uh, supervised social experiences um, so that, as to avoid, you know, uh, really unfortunate out of control social interactions occurring. 